Hi guys, this is JasonRob.com and I'm here with the Huawei P60 Pro for an unboxing. It has arrived finally after being unveiled in China a few months ago and I have to say it's gorgeous. So each version of the pearl pearlescent white version of the handset has its own pattern. So basically you're getting a unique phone every time you buy the white version. The price should be at around 1050 euros in Europe and boy is this a huge lens here at the center. Leica has been replaced by XMH for a year now and this is Huawei's current flagship, the Huawei P60 Pro, even though there is even talk of the Mate 60 Pro already on the internet. So what's new here? Well, we got the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor, we have the quad curved screen, we also have some innovation for the camera including the variable aperture plus optical image stabilization and uh, well, still they're using the RYYB sensor. At the same time, uh, it's a small phone by today's standards and I'm talking here about how well it fits in the hand and it uses the Emotion UI 13.1 on top of the, I'll admit it, old Android 12. Now let's see what's inside the box and what makes this device so special. Okay, so Huawei P60 Pro, current Huawei flagship, offers you a um, key used to access the slots, nano memory, of course, and the uh, nano SIM as well. Here you can find the case, which will not uh, obscure the beautiful white backside, pearlescent white. By the way, uh, there's also a black version with a bit of glitter inserted in it, so just so you know, there are two color versions available here. Now, aside from that, we also get a fast charger in the box. I don't seem to have a manual, not sure if you'll get one. Uh, most companies are trying to get rid of the uh, paper waste nowadays, so yeah. Okay, so here we are with the charger, which has an interesting aspect. Aside from the 88 watt charging thingy, I mean, uh, there's something interesting here. There are two ports, so USB-C and USB-A, which means you can also juice up your laptop, not just your phone. Which is pretty cool. By the way, don't try to juice them both at the same time. This is the cable going from USB-C to USB-A and we are about done with the content of the box. Okay, so let's get back to the handset innovation and novelty. I'll say it again. This is the white version. There's also a black version. It measures 8.3 millimeters in thickness. This is an aluminum frame. This is glass. This is glass again quad curved on the corners with Kun Lun glass protection and also a plastic protection applied from the factory to keep the screen well intact when it comes to scratches and apparently also drops. Now aside from that I have to say that the device feels as comfy in my hand as the Huawei P40 Pro did. It actually reminds me a lot of the P40 Pro if I close my eyes and just squeeze it in the hand. It's not slippery, it's got a reassuring texture at the backside and the camera module is finally not huge compared to other flagships. Also IP68 certifica certified just so you know. Okay so um, we're done with the, the design for now. I think uh, it's time we also talked about the display. It's an OLED uh, LTPO, so it can go down to 1 Hz or up to 120 Hz, quad curved, 6.67 inches, uh, 2700 over 1220 pixel resolution, 300 Hz touch sampling rate, and also there's the uh, 100 and, uh, excuse me, 1440 Hz PWM dimming, so you will not perceive that uh, screen flicker which bothers some people's eyes. There's also support for HDR Vivid, just in case you're wondering. Now the CPU inside can be labeled as last gen, but it's a powerful last gen. Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, 4 nanometer, octa-core and the 4G version on account of the, you know it, the US limitations imposed to China and Huawei. Now here we have the version with 8 gigs of RAM and also 256 gigabytes of storage. By the way, um, you're getting a 512 giga version as well plus nano memory. When it comes to the battery, it's a 4850 mAh unit with 88 watt charging via wire and also 50 watt wireless charging, which is welcome. Now, Huawei is offering stereo speakers. This is one of them here next to the USB-C 3.1 port and the SIM tray and a microphone or yes, microphone. And the other one is, as you can see here, placed at the top side. And here we have the infrared emitter and another microphone plus the two antenna cutouts. Now, um, as far as connectivity is concerned, you have probably guessed that we are only 
limit it to 4G here, there's no 5G. We also get Wi-Fi 6, GPS, NFC, infrared emitter and uh, USB-C 3.1. And now we can talk about the cameras. I'm going to start with the easy thing in a punch hole here, a singular one like the P50 Pro had. We can find a 13 megapixel camera with f2.4 aperture, 4K capture and guess what? It's an ultra wide camera by default so you can actually if you start a selfie you're going to do something like this and alternate between 0.8x uh, the ultra wide and the 1x so yeah uh, you got the whole ultra wide thing going for you to catch a wider frame behind you when you're recording now aside from the front camera we have a lot to talk about for the back side this is a triple camera setup with a dual tone dual led flash x -Mage technology has replaced Leica and here we have the main sensor which is a 48 megapixel one with uh, variable aperture from f1.4 still the record of the industry to f4.0 we have a similar thing on the Huawei Mate 50 Pro it lets you create a better depth of field for DSLR like bokeh and also with f2.0 aperture in an AI mode you can take beautiful scenery shots it has phase detection autofocus optical limit stabilization and laser autofocus then we have the uh, 48 megapixel telephoto camera which is uh, one that offers optical limit stabilization 3.5x optical zoom and a special type of lenses a multi-group lens with a concave form which captures light in a special manner for the ultra lighting for improved nighttime capture and finally the 13 megapixel ultra wide camera with f2.2 aperture Okay, that's about it. I hope I didn't bother you or bore you with all these details. Now, the camera app itself is filled with options going from monochrome to time lapse, super macro, story creator, panorama, light painting with several sub modes, documents, high res, multicam, slow mo, AR lens, dual view, and snapshot. Now, we also have the pro mode with tweaks for the white balance, autofocus, exposure, shutter, ISO, and metering. And uh, you also take, can take uh, raw shots. This is the video department. It's an interesting way of changing the resolution and the frames per second here in the corner. And finally the photo area, but guess what? There's an area here which I actually missed when I first used the phone. It's this one here, where you can actually set up the aspect ratio, flash, Xmage, master AI, moving pictures, filters, and settings. So Xmage, just like Leica does on Xiaomi's, allows you to use a sort of, well, filter. So this is the original, then you have the vivid and the bright. The names are pretty self-explanatory. Okay, and Master AI actually does a fine job at identifying food, flowers, macros and other scenery. Well, in general, the macro is identified by the camera itself in a pretty uh, snappy and accurate manner. From what I understood, uh, Huawei has also implemented here a brand new texture engine and it uh, captures three times more light than the sensor on the Huawei P50 Pro, iPhone 14 and all that. Okay, uh, there are more things to uncover here. I think I actually forgot to show you the full portrait area with beauty effects and also with effects, the night mode, and the aperture which lets you play with the steps here properly, even going as far as f0.95. There's uh, just like the Mate 50 Pro, there's physical aperture and a virtual aperture. The physical one is four steps, the virtual one is I think 10 or 16 or something like that, if I remember correctly from the Mate 50 Pro. Now, software-wise, you're in for a bit of a disappointment because this is Android 12 with Emotion UI 13.1 on top. And for the life of me, I can't figure out which novelty we have here. I mean, I do know there's something special for the always on display. So if you go here and go here, there should be a special weather option available. This one here, weather, which can be downloaded. And depending on the weather outside, it can change which is a nice feature. Other than that, we're using gestures to navigate. This is the multitasking area. This is the drop-down section with the quick settings, the so-called control panel. And this is the notifications area from here. So yeah, that's about it. Okay, so we downloaded that earlier. Let's actually see it in action because I'm pretty curious about it. Okay, so this is the weather, I think. Or is this this one? Okay, so it's this one here. It's supposed to rain from what I know. And let's actually leave it be. It's a cloudy night. Okay, that's quite fine. I wish there was an animation here, but I'm definitely sure there are more tweaks to apply. I'm using the face unlock, but there's also an optical fingerprint scanner in the screen, which should work quite fine. Okay, so all in all, this is the first contact with the Huawei P60 Pro. I'm loving 
the design. The design is the thing that uh, amazes me the most, this pearlescent white backside, the way each unit is different, and the camera has a lot of promise in two regards. I would say that it's the capture of light and also the ability to pull off a DSLR-like bokeh shot. Now, if we're going to handle Android 12 in 2023, that remains to be seen. That's it from us. We'll be back with a full review pretty soon. Goodbye.